Hello everyone, and welcome back to Bola Tech. In today's video, I'll be guiding you through the process of crafting a block theme for WordPress in just a few minutes. Let's dive right in without any further ado. Block theme plugin and Gutenberg. This plugin will allow you to create a new theme, blank theme, child theme, and style variations. It also has a pretty cool feature which lets you upload fonts or you can choose from the Google library. In this video, we are only going to cover the creation of the theme and exploring some of the options. I will be creating a full site using the create block themes in another video. Hey, welcome everybody. Before we start, for those wondering what web server I'm using locally for this example, I'm on Windows and I'm using Laragon. As long as you have an up-to-date WordPress website that supports blocks, then you should be good to go. I've already created a brand new WordPress website. And as you can see, this is using the default theme, which is 2023. If we jump to the dashboard, the first thing that we need to do is go to plugins and then add new. From here, we need to search for create block theme and install the first one in here, which is the one with the blue icon that was created by WordPress.org. So install now and click activate. Next, we need to install Gutenberg. So add new and then Gutenberg we can get from here from the first page install now. So Gutenberg is actually going to unlock some of the latest features that we can use. And I'm going to show you this in a second. Now, the first thing that we need to do is go to appearance and then themes. From here, as you can see, these are the three themes that we have currently installed and we need to create a new one with all block theme plugin. So if you go to appearance, create block theme, from here, you will see that we have a couple of options. For example, export 2023, create a child theme, clone, override, create blank theme, and create a style variation. For this tutorial, I'm going to be creating a blank theme. So select that, and then I'm going to give it a name of Ruddy. The rest is not required, so I'm just going to click generate. As you can see, all blank theme was created. And now if you go to appearance, you should be able to see it inside here. It doesn't have a thumbnail, but that's not a big deal. So let's click activate. And now all themes should be active. If we go back to the website and if we refresh, you should be able to see that all theme just changed. So we have a very basic header. We have the content here and we have a very basic footer. If we go back to the dashboard and if we go to appearance and then manage theme fonts, from here is where we can add custom fonts. Now you can either choose to add local fonts. So you can click on this and browse the font from your computer and upload that. It has to be in those formats specified in here. And all you need to do is give it a name and a font style and just upload the font. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using Google fonts. So I'm going to go to manage team fonts and then click add Google font. Now, since I'm using Laragon, some of you might get a permission error and I want to show you what it is and how to fix it super quickly. It's only going to take a second. So if I select the font, it doesn't really matter which one it is. Select the variant and then add Google fonts to theme. You will see that I'm getting an error and the error is WordPress lack permissions to write assets. This is basically saying that WordPress doesn't have permissions to write the font assets into the folder. In order to fix this on Windows with Laragon, all you need to do is open Laragon, stop all the services, close it, and now search for Laragon in your applications, and then right click and run as administrator. Press yes, and then start everything. Okay, click back on manage theme fonts, and that should fix your issue. Now, if you go back to add Google font, and we can select the fonts that we want. I'm going to select IBM, and the one that I want is going to be the IBM Plex Sans. And from here, we can select the variations that we want. For example, I can choose regular and bold and extra bold in here and just add this font to your theme. I'm going to add one more for this example. So let's select. And this one is going to be called Quicksand, this one here. And this is going to be the font for the headings with the extra bold in here and add Google font to your theme. If you go back to manage theme font, you should be able to see that we have the system font, we have the IBM font and we have the Quicksand. And now we can have a look at how we can change the appearance of our theme. In order to do this, go to Appearance Editor. This will open the full site editing editor. Inside here, we have a template. And inside here, we have the template parts, for example, the footer and the header. 
that's not something that I'm gonna look into now. Today, what I wanna show you is the global style. If we click here on edit, and then here on the right side, you will see that we have two icons. One is settings that toggles the settings bar and the block settings in here. And the other one is the style. So if you click on styles from here, you'll be able to change some of the global styles. For example, topography, colors, and layout. Now let's start from the bottom and I'm gonna show you why super quickly. So for the layout, if we click on this, you will see that you can change the width of your content areas. For example, as you can see, it's quite constrained in here. So I can change this to 1,400 like so. And for the white, maybe I can just put it as 1,600 instead. You can also mess around with your padding and the block padding from here. As you can see, it changes everything. I'm gonna control and Z this to 24 pixels and I will go back and let's have a look at the colors. For the colors, we have a default palette in here. So if I click on it, you'll see that we have a couple of default colors that we can use throughout our website and the same with the gradients. There are a couple of gradients, but if you look below this, you'll see that you can add custom colors. So for example, I can click add color and from here, let's start with a yellowy color, for example, like so, and I can give it a name. Then let's create two more. For example, this can be like a slightly less darker black color. I'm going to call it almost black. And then I'm going to do one more, which is going to be a red color. And this is going to be both pretty much red. Now, before you leave this page, you need to click done. And this will add the custom colors. And now we can use them throughout our layout. If I go back inside here, you will see that we have elements such as the background. So I can change the background color from here if I wish to. Let's go back. We have the text. For the text, maybe I can change it to the one that I just added. It won't make much of a difference because it was already black, I think. And then we have the links. For the links, maybe we can just go with black like so. But as you can see, if I change the color, the links change as well, which is pretty cool. I'm going to leave as black. And then we also have headings. For the headings, I'm going to click black in here. But you're getting the point. You can select whatever heading you wish. For example, H1, H2, H3, H4. And select the color that you wish. And then you can do the same thing for the buttons. Now, one really cool thing that I wanted to show you before I change the buttons is that if you toggle here on styles, you can click on this eye here. And this is going to show you the style book uh, which they have created. And this is pretty awesome. Now, the reason this is awesome is because if I wanted to change the buttons, obviously I want to see how they look like. And what I could do is if I click on the second tab here, you will see that we get in different media. Then we have design tab. So on the design tab, we have the buttons. In this case, I can go to the styles of buttons. And from here, I can change the colors to whatever I like. For example, the red ones. And then we can also change the actual text inside. You can make it black or whatever is more contrasty, like so. Now let's go back and let's have a look at the rest of the stuff. Let's go back one more time. And once you go back to this style screen, let's go to the topography here and we can do exactly the same thing that we've done with the colors. For example, we can change the topography from here to the topography that I added earlier. So in this case, I'm going to go with IBM Black Sands. As you can see, they change and they look really nice. We can change the size, appearance and so on. And that's the text. Then we have links. This is just going to use the default one, so I'm going to leave it. And for the headings, first of all, let's make sure that we see them. So I'm going to click on headings here and let's click on text. So we have a couple of headings in here. And now let's choose the font. I'm going to choose quicksand. And as you can see, this changes the font straight away. Appearance, we can set to extra bold or bold. I don't know which one I downloaded, but uh, but as you can see, you can mess around from here and make your font look the way you want. As you can see, we can make it larger and so on. Let's go back and let's have a look at the buttons now. For the buttons, if I go to design one more time, from here, we can change the font to whatever we like. For example, the quicksand looks pretty cool. We can put it as IBM Plex Sands and so on. The last thing that I wanted to show you is that if you go back to styles and if we click on blocks, from here, you can actually edit a lot of the blocks. Not all of them have options, but what you can do is you can either select one of them like so, and this will go to the right page here. For example, it selects the buttons. But let me show you another example. I can go to media and I can select this image here. And as you can see, it has one option here for border, 
So potentially I could change the border like so. You have to mess around. Let's go to the cover here. If I click on this, you'll see that for the cover, we can change the topography. Maybe I can change it to quicksand. We can change the layout. Maybe you want to add some paddings and margins and so on. So you can literally go around here, select whatever element you like. For example, the button, you can go to the border here and change it if you wish. So let's make it square. Save this color. You can change the background color if you wish and so on. Now that we've done some changes to our team, I can click save, save. And then if I go back to the team, refresh, you will see that our team has changed and we have some more the tiles in here. And now just like that, you can start building your page with good and back. And the last thing that I wanted to show you super quickly is that if I go back to the dashboard, if I click on appearance, create block theme from here, I can export the theme like so. And if we super quickly have a look at the theme files, I click on theme.json, you should see that it has some of the options that we created. For example, the uh, yellow color that I added, the almost black color, the pretty much red color and the fonts and so on. So this is pretty awesome, I hope. And, uh, and before I finish with this video, we can definitely remove this plugin from here so we can deactivate Gutenberg and we can deactivate the block theme and our website will be totally working just like so because we created the theme we don't really need that anymore anyways thank you very much for watching i hope that you found this useful consider subscribing to my channel like this video and we've reached the conclusion of our presentation should you appreciate what you've seen please consider liking the video subscribing to our channel and activating the notification bell to ensure you're alerted to our upcoming valuable content thank you for watching